The Supreme Court hears arguments on a question that could fundamentally affect the upcoming presidential election. One America's Hans Hubbard has more. The Supreme Court is gearing up for a decision on the Electoral College, deciding whether electors can vote against the winner of the state's ballot. On Wednesday, the nation's highest court heard oral arguments on the issue, which were held remotely via telephone. Two cases before the court, Colorado Department of State v. Barker and Schaffler v. Washington, hinge on whether states have the ability to hold electors accountable to the popular vote in their state's elections. Lawrence Lessig, a Harvard Law professor who sought the Democrat nomination in 2016 and supports broad electoral reform, represented the electors, claiming the founding fathers wished for them to vote unfettered by the decisions of the state citizens. The question in these cases is straightforward. Do the states have the power to control through law how an elector may vote? They do not. The ordinary expected meaning of the words of the Constitution against the background of the framers' deliberation make it clear that the states have no such power. The Constitution lays the power to choose electors with states, but the ability to constrain their votes has never been explicitly defined at the federal level. However, Noah Purcell, Solicitor General for the state of Washington, argued the ability to set conditions on electors' vote is implied by the Constitution. The Constitution gives states the power to appoint electors. That power has always included the power to set conditions of appointment, such as requiring that an elector live in the state or show up for the Electoral College meeting. One condition that states are clearly allowed to impose is that electors promise to support the presidential candidate preferred by the state's voters. Some electoral experts worry unbinding electors' vote could open the door to corruption as parties might seek to influence electors directly following close races, thus effectively annulling the democratic right of citizens to choose their precedent. Conservative justices of the court echoed this sentiment, citing the uncertainty this could produce. Those who disagree with your argument say that it would lead to chaos, uh, that in where the election, where the popular vote is close, and changing just a few votes would alter the outcome or throw it into the House of Representatives, there would be if the rational response of the losing political party or elements within the losing political party would be to launch a massive campaign to try to influence electors. And more progressive justices also seem poised to back the right of states to constrain electors, noting failing to do so could contravene legal precedent and highlighting the obligation of electors to represent the will of the people. A juror makes all sorts of pledges to be impartial, not to discuss the case with anyone during the trial, not to research the case with the parties, to tell the truth during broad year. Yet if a juror is selected and violates one of those pledges, say the juror talks about the case with the other jury members, the judge is empowered, uh, with others than the jury members, the judge is empowered to remove that juror. Um, so why isn't a presidential elector subject to being removed in the same way? The court is widely expected to rule in favor of the states, a move political analysts have welcomed ahead of the November elections, which they say could once again be a close race. And in such a scenario, they say, clarification of electors' duties could very well stem a chaotic, uncertain period following the election and preserve the right of citizens to choose their nation's leader. Hans Hobbard, One American News. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.